In this video, I'm going to review the piece Scherzo in Unit 18. This is pages 230 and 231. And for this assignment, you do not have to take the repeats. I'm just going to play it all the way straight through. And actually, I am going to end um, at the end of the second page in 231. I'm not going to go back and repeat. Um, you should technically end where the fine is at measure 16. But just for time's sake, I'm going to play through both pages straight through without the repeats. So this is Scherzo. with each of these, it's, it's quite section based. Every two measures kind of has its own little theme. Um, the beginning of the piece, we are in the key of A minor. And how do you know that? You start with a lot of A minor chords. You have a couple of G sharps, that's the raised seventh. As you're working with this, maybe take out the staccatos and just play one chord per measure. Uh, three and four. It's a B minor seventh chord, um, just rearranged in, in third inversion. And then you're back to an A minor chord. This is a G7 chord. Okay, so work your way through the first two lines. Again, just practice those chords through the entire measure. And you can do the same thing over in measure 25 when you have those repeated chords. Notice in measure 25 you're in the treble clef for the left hand, so you're actually on a C major chord in measure 25. You could just hold that chord down. And get used to that first when you're putting hands together. Okay. Measure 9, um, back to page 230, we have this new idea. But the notes aren't in unison, so just be careful. It would be totally different sound if you were in unison. You are starting on different pitches, and then measure 12, you're going in contrary motion, hands against each other rather than parallel motion. Measure 13, again here. practicing, simplify things and just work on, if the chord is the same for a couple of beats, just practice that, that measure with holding the chord against your right hand. So you get more comfortable with hands together, but you're not, um, you're just learning it piecemeal. You're not trying to put it all together at once. Um, you're making life a little bit easier if you just hold out the chord first and then practice breaking it up. Measure 17, the top of page 231, we have a totally new idea. Now your left hand um, is in a lower range. Your right hand sustains some chords for the entire measure. And notice we've also switched keys. We have a key change. Um, we're now in the key of F major with a B flat. So listen carefully to those chords again in the first line. quite a few of those chords in your left hand and in your right hand, excuse me, and in your left hand. And notice the left hand um, almost repeats itself in the second line. The right hand chords are slightly different in line one versus line two. 
Uh, measure 25, again we go back to the repeated chords in the right hand. And then measure 30, it's basically a scale in, in a way. It's not quite an F scale, it's not fingered exactly like an F scale. But if you follow the finger exactly from the top of measure of, um, of the line, measure 29 starts on a D. down um, with the minimum number of crossings in that particular passage. And then the end of um, the section of measure uh, on page 231, again, this is like the top of the page with the chords in the right hand and the left hand with these two note slurs. I'm going to play through the entire song again. repeats, um, you would take the DC Alfine, go back to the beginning, and technically end at measure 16. So break the song apart into smaller groups um, and practice each section as you're working hands together.